All right, so today for our seminar on tax theory, we have the pleasure of welcoming Sarah Maloney again from Brown University, who's going to talk about mapping plant group actions on character varieties. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for coming. Okay, before I forget, so everything uh, I'm talking about is joint work uh, with uh, Frederick Palesi and Sir Pute. Um, I might mention some work which is just with Frederick, but I will tell later. And uh, um, so what, I'm, what I want to do is that, uh, so the plan, uh, it will be, so I will start with an introduction that uh, will be, in some sense, two flavors. So first, uh, we will have a history. And then uh, I will state uh, the result. And in the history, I just decided to focus on two parts. Uh, one part about machine identities. And the second part about the dynamics on character variety. And then I will spend some time on the setup. So basically, I will uh, translate my problem uh, in uh, a different setting. And uh, which is a sort of more combinatorial uh, or combinatorics of simple closed curve type of method. And then uh, I will give you an idea of uh, some of the proof. And hopefully I will have time to say about uh, future direction. Okay. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so uh, I think it was uh, 1991 uh, when uh, Greg, I think Caroline, my advisor, was, was telling me that uh, uh, these PhD students go to his uh, uh, advisor, that uh, David, uh, um, David, that uh, uh, David Epstein, that, uh, and with this very strange identity, and it, he didn't believe him, so he sent it back. So I checked because it doesn't make any sense; it's not possible. And the idea was the following: so he was considering uh, a one old torus, and uh, um, so he was fixing uh, an hyperbolic metric. Uh, so he was fixing. Uh, a point in Tecmuller space, uh, and he was considering this identity. So you consider all possible uh, simple closed curve, and then uh, you do this sum, one over one plus uh, the exponential of the length. And this sum, he was claiming it was equal one half. So in particular, it doesn't depend on uh, the, on, the, on the point in Tecmuller space. But uh, yeah, he was right. And uh, uh, it's, it has been a very, uh, since then, it, has, it had a very strong uh, influence in maths. So uh, people started generalizing. So first, uh, by a covering argument, you can see the case of the photosphere, sphere. And then uh, Greg did the case of uh, a puncture surface, uh, some more general surface. Uh, then uh, uh, Mariam uh, uh, used it, uh, so she looked at the case of uh, opening up the cusp, so geodesic boundary. And in fact, she used it for uh, uh, a very nice uh, um, result related to uh, somehow these results proved by Konsevich uh, at the level of the moduli space. Uh, you can th then people look at the uh, cone point. Uh, and uh, so since it's just a little part in the talk, I don't want to go too much into the details. But it's very interesting. 
but uh, a, an important uh, uh, bit of the story I want to mention is uh, in 1996, uh, Brian Bodwich, uh, I think it was the first time uh, that uh, he, so Brian, when he see the proof of someone else, uh, sometimes he doesn't understand the proof, and so he just does his own proof. Uh, and uh, uh, I think this was the first time that uh, he reproved something that someone else uh, proved it. And, uh, uh, but uh, in particular, uh, so he had this idea. So uh, the point is that uh, a point in Teichmuller space, uh, you can also see as a particular representation from F2, in this case, uh, into PSL to R. Okay? So, then you can try to think uh, if you can generalize the group, the target group, okay? And uh, so Brian, uh, so uh, Greg Ideas was really using hyperbolic geometry. So he was looking uh, at uh, a, a neighbor of the cusp and was looking how for every simple closed curve, uh, he, there is an associated uh, geodesic uh, going to the cusp uh, and he was looking how simple closed curve behave and he had this gap map, it, which was really hyperbolic geometry method. Brian instead had a more combinatorial approach uh, and in fact uh, this will be the one that I will use uh, uh, today. And uh, in particular his new, this new proof uh, also lead to generalization. To PSL to C. Okay, and uh, um, and then after uh, small Brian did again the case of quasi Fuchsian groups, uh, and uh, small he look at uh, small lots of generalization. And uh, in this type of generalization is uh, the method that we will use today, which uh, in some what we are going to do today is more related to having an action on uh, the space of representation, uh, the action on the mapping class group, and finding a domain of discontinuity. Uh, and uh, somehow, and still nowadays, there are still lots of open questions in this, uh, in, this, uh, um, in this paper that he had uh, that are, uh, yeah, very deep. And uh, okay, so this is uh, basically the first uh, bits of history. And uh, now I want to tell you something about uh, dynamics on character variety, okay? So uh, I keep saying character variety, but in fact, for what I do, I don't, uh, so what's a character variety? So a character variety, when you have uh, your, from a group uh, gamma into a group G, so you take uh, the representation and then, uh, up to conjugation, and then people put uh, this uh, double quotient, so this GIT quotient, uh, and uh, somehow you do it because you want uh, your uh, some something to be a variety. But for what I do, uh, is all dynamic, so I can just take up to conjugation, and that's what uh, uh, what you should uh, what you should think about. But uh, so when you have something like that, you have an action of uh, the uh, the outer group, uh, which is uh, somehow you have uh, somehow gamma in the out of gamma, and you take a representation or a class, so then you have uh, theta time rho. So when you have uh, theta, then you look at the associated uh, uh, small, then here it's. Uh, so depending on what uh, uh, so you act, uh, basically. So sometimes you need uh, to put inverses to have uh, a right action. But uh, I will uh, actually, in the case of the mapping class group that we will look, uh, I will be more precise. But uh, so uh, the point is that, uh, uh, so in particular, I will look uh, in many cases at uh, pi one of a surface uh, and uh, uh, I will, uh, small. the group will vary, but uh, small. I will often have as uh, here, pi one of a surface, which can be close uh, or uh, a free group, okay? 
so just to tell you how type of uh, which type of uh, results one prove is that uh, for example let's say that uh, your group your ca target group is compact you can think as uh, su2 for example then uh, the action here so here you can look at the mapping class group action okay so mapping class group uh, you should think as uh, the orientation preserving homeomorphism up uh, to homotopy <coughs> and in case uh, your surface has boundary you I, you I usually fix the boundary element uh, and uh, um, yeah and then I will speak a bit about outer fan but uh, so in, uh, in when your target group is compact uh, then the action is ergodic so this is due to Goldman for SU2 Pickrell and Xia for a uh, more general uh, compact group, uh, palesi when uh, the surface uh, is non-orientable, and uh, uh, Gillander um, when you look instead at uh, uh, Fn. And uh, uh, so many times the, the tools to prove ergodicity, at least this is uh, uh, Bill type of method uh, is to have a trace reduction argument, okay? And uh, you need to be careful. So when I was giving a talk in an Arbor, I gave, I, I, I tell, yes, so this action is boring from the point of view of a person looking for proper discontinuous action. And uh, uh, Rafa was in the audience and he was telling me, oh, then I study boring things. So <laughs> I guess uh, one need to, yeah. So if you want uh, some sort of, uh, yeah, you look for uh, proper discontinuity, you shouldn't look at compact group, okay? But on the other end, uh, when uh, G is non-compact, uh, things are more uh, complicated because, uh, let's say that uh, you consider PSL2R, uh, then uh, you know that uh, you have your Teichmuller space. Uh, or uh, if you consider PSL2C, you have your quasi fuchsian space or Schottky space in the case of a free group. And so here you know that uh, this, uh, the action here is proper discontinuous. Okay, on the other end, uh, um, just to let you know somehow some of the uh, subtitles. Uh, so in the case of the character variety, let's say, Let's take a closed surface to PSL2R. So this character variety has 4G minus 3 connected component, indexed by the Euler class. So you have the Teichmuller components, and then you have uh, other components in the middle, okay? And uh, is a conjecture by Goldman that uh, the mapping grass group action on uh, the non-maximal or non tech muller component uh, is ergodic. And for a while there was really no progress on this conjecture, but uh, recently this conjecture has been proved for the genus 2 case and it has been proved for uh, the Euler zero class, okay? Genus 2 case is, uh, um, is uh, Julien Marché and Maxim Wolf, and uh, it's, uh, it's really a genus 2 type of method because uh, they look at uh, small hyper elliptic evolution and uh, uh, arrangement of simple closed curve. And instead for the Euler class zero, uh, is one sort of that he has uh, some method using uh, some harmonic analysis, so uh, how the Euler class zero is related to some certain energy. Uh, but uh, 
yeah, so uh, these are the only case known for this uh, type of conjecture, okay? And uh, today we will restrict to a very particular case. So in particular, we will have a PSL2C most of the time, and, uh, or actually SL2C. And uh, um, we will look at uh, a particular group F, uh, F3. But okay, so I just, uh, in some sense, uh, these type of results uh, kind of fit uh, in uh, this type of uh, history, okay? So, yeah, so let me tell you the case that we will look uh, uh, today, okay? So today we will look at uh, free group uh, in three generators uh, and PSL2C. Okay, so in this case, uh, so uh, is uh, Minsky. Minsky look at the action of uh, out F3. So in fact, he did for out Fn, okay? He look at the action of out Fn on uh, the uh, PSL2C character variety and uh, uh, he found, so, in this type of results, uh, in fact, uh, so if you look at convex compact representation uh, in any uh, Lie group, uh, because uh, small here Techmuller space, uh, quasi Fuchsian uh, space uh, is uh, the particular case of convex compact representation in this case. Uh, so when you have PSLN, uh, you can look at a nose of representation. And then the same theorem is true. So the action of the mapping class group is. Uh, is uh, proper discontinuous. Uh, but then you can try to ask, uh, can I find a bigger domain of discontinuity for this action? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Did you yeah. uh, ex explain the relation with the matching identity? No, and uh, the, pr the point is that uh, somehow these, so Bodwich had a new results, uh, a new proof of uh, this uh, same conjecture, and this new proof, uh, he used the method uh, that uh, the one that I will use today, so what he called Markov map, uh, and uh, with those methods, uh, then uh, you are able to prove that uh, there is a bigger domain of discontinuity for the action of the mapping grass group on your character variety. Yeah. And the, in addition, uh, you can also do the reverse. So with this new method, uh, then uh, you can also define a a machine identity. So also in our case, actually, we didn't really write it down the new identity because uh, somehow you can do, you can write it down this new identity algebraically. But uh, to me, unless I find uh, a geometrical meaning of this identity, I don't uh, really see the point. And uh, uh, but in the case of F two, there is uh, there are lots of new new identities that uh, arise from this type of results. Yeah. Yes, thank you. And uh, uh, yeah, so what I was saying is that, uh, so E, small, in the case of, in this character variety, you can look at the interior of discrete and faithful representation, so the Schottky representation. And uh, here the action is uh, proper discontinuous, the action of out Fn. But then you can ask, okay, so can I find the bigger domain of discontinuity? And that's what uh, Yair proved. Okay, so he found uh, the set of uh, primitive stable representation. So he proved that, uh, so basically I can state it as uh, uh, the primitive stable representation is a domain of discontinuity for uh, the action. Of uh, out F3. Okay, so what is this set of primitive stable representation? You consider all the primitive element uh, in the free group, uh, and then you look at the associated axis uh, in uh, the Kelly graph, uh, and then you want that to be a quasi geodesic, uniformly quasi geodesic. Okay, um, and uh, uh, for him, it's actually not so hard to prove that this set is primitive stable, but what is really hard uh, is uh, to prove uh, that uh, this uh, set uh, strictly contains the Schottky representation. 
and uh, he does that using some whited graph uh, method uh, and uh, uh, so pinching the proper curves uh, on the boundary. But uh, uh, on the other end, uh, um, F3, you can also see as a fundamental group of some surface, okay? And in this talk, uh, I will look at this F3 as pi 1 of the photosphere. In fact, uh, somehow you can also look at uh, as pi 1 of a non-orientable surface, uh, as uh, uh, the one projective plane with three punctures. And uh, if I have time, uh, I will show you how these two points of view are very dual one uh, with respect to the other. And in fact, the mapping class group uh, of one and the mapping class group of the other, they will generate the Torelli. And so somehow uh, you will be able to understand better the action of Torelli. But uh, uh, yeah, for now I will focus on this case. Uh, but uh, most of the things I'm going to say in this statement uh, you can uh, so interpret it properly in this, uh, in this new setting. Okay, how you do that? So, so you have your F3 that uh, we will see as generated by alpha, beta, and gamma. Or, uh, um, and so you have, uh, you, we will look at uh, these as alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay. And so we will look at the mapping class group action on this character variety. So what are so the question is that uh, what are the dynamics uh, of this action? Okay? But uh, as uh, I will uh, show you soon, so this character variety is huge. It's basically six dimension, uh, seven complex dimension plus one restriction. And so it's uh, very useful to restrict uh, to a smaller one, so what are the dynamics uh, of uh, the action on uh, the relative character variety? What is the relative character variety? Is the one where you fix uh, the values of the trace in the boundary, okay? So you fix uh, a four tuple in uh, in C, and then uh, the relative character variety is, uh, it is a set of representations su such that the trace of rho of alpha is A, and so, etc. Okay? In fact, uh, so this element uh, actually is alpha, beta, gamma. Okay? So, and now, so now I'm telling you the two results I will discuss today. So the first one uh, is uh, a result analogous of uh, the results of Minsky. So we find the domain of discontinuity for this new action, uh, which uh, strictly contain uh, Schottky. In fact, it will uh, strictly contain uh, primitive stable representation. So uh, there exists uh, a domain of discontinuity. For. Is uh, so when I say domain of discontinuity, is, is it clear? Should I recall what's primitive stability, uh, pro what uh, proper discontinuity is? Okay. Uh, for uh, the mapping class group action on the character variety, uh, such that, uh, or uh, which uh, strictly contain. primitive stable. And in fact, so if you ask the same question for uh, F2, 
then you can do exactly the same and you can prove that uh, uh, the primitive stable representation are included in the Bodwich set. That is the one that I'm going to describe. But in fact, the conjecture is for F2 that the two sets are the same. And uh, it's the maximal uh, domain of this continuity. Yeah, so because actually one piece of history that I forgot to say is that uh, why people are interested in this type of question, because it would be very nice to have uh, a dynamical decomposition of uh, character variety. And uh, in the case of character variety of Fn, uh, when n is bigger or equal to 3, Yerminsky and uh, uh, Gelander, they have this notion of redundant representation uh, where the action is ergodic. Okay? And uh, the big uh, uh, open question is to prove that uh, up to measure 0, this is the only things you can get. Okay? And uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so. So there's no yeah. relativization in theorem A? No. Yeah, in fact, somehow, somehow, since we are looking at the mapping class group that fixed the boundary, so I can, uh, I can fix the boundary. Uh, the point is that uh, if I fix the boundary value, I cannot, ta I cannot say straightforward that uh, these uh, strictly contain uh, primitive stable or strictly contain uh, uh, short key. Because, uh, for example, if I take all the all the uh, boundary point to be parabolic, uh, somehow it's, uh, um, it's, uh, it's different. So in some sense, the way to, for example, a nice way to see that uh, this domain uh, strictly contain the interior of discrete and faithful representation is uh, you can take uh, a boundary element, uh, um, before I say, I say wrongly, but if you take the boundary element to be parabolic or elliptic, uh, so you can show that uh, these, uh, so in some cases, this uh, set, this uh, representation will be in our set, uh, and it will not be, uh, it will not be, um, uh, if it's uh, elliptic, it will not be faithful, for example. But uh, if you ask, uh, if you give me a random choice, for example, you choose all your uh, boundary trace to be hyperbolic, I cannot tell for sure if uh, the primitive stable relative uh, character variety is strictly bigger than uh, the one. Okay, so um, that's, uh, that's why I stated it like that. So we will see that our method um, for most of the time will restrict uh, to uh, the slice, we will refer to the relative character variety, but to tell that it strictly contain uh, primitive stable, I need to be able to choose the boundary value. Would the, would the, question, would the correct question <laughs> be whether it strictly contains the intersection of the primitive stable with the relative variety? Would that be the correct question? Uh, yes, but what am I saying is that there are some slices uh, that uh, I would bet the answer is no. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Can you the definition of primitive stable? Yes. So you are in a free group. You take uh, a primitive element. You take its image. You look at the image in the Kali graph. You actually embed uh, with the orbit map the Kali graph into H3. And then uh, you look at uh, these axes of primitive element. And you want all of them to be uniformly quasi-geodesic. So to be at banded distance from a geodesic, uh, but this bound to be uniform. Uh, which is in some sense is the small, if you think in terms of, uh, uh, of the representation of the anoso representation or convex or compact, uh, small, you, you ask uh, some, uh, uh, I can state it in a, in a different way, but you, you can state it in this way. The representation such that there exists a k that just depends on the representation, such that the length of rho of, of gamma is greater or equal k times the word length of gamma for all the gamma primitive. Is that just for primitive element, yes. Exactly. So it's not, the primitive stable is not quasi um, isometric, like it? In some sense, small, you, you know that uh, and also for convex compact are well displacing uh, for all simple closed curve. You want to restrict uh, 
to a different subset, and so you restrict to primitive element. In fact, there is the notion of primitive stability for any Lie group, uh, exactly using uh, this type of results. And I'm going to, I'm going to show you how, how our setting, uh, it will be the same and we will restrict to simple closed curve. So in general, for an OSOF, it's true for all group element. Okay. Another quick, quick question yeah? is uh, just, I was uh, thinking about, you said it's dimension six, I will, uh, I will tell you why it's dimension uh, C. It's dimension 9, the character variety of F3. Uh, complex dimension uh, 6. Uh, yes. It's because uh, you can parameterize by the trace of rho alpha, beta, gamma, and delta, and then the double product. So, there's alpha, beta, gamma. You don't put a restriction on the like parabolic columnar. No, because F3 has not, uh, so F3 can be pi 1 of the photo sphere, or it can be oh, yeah. pi 1 of different surfaces. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is the first type of results. And then the second type of result uh, is that, uh, okay, so what about the real part of the character variety? Uh, I will tell you why small. Some people are more interested in that. Uh, but uh, so the action, uh, so <coughs> mapping class group action on uh, the real part of the character variety, what does it mean? It means a representation in PSL2R or uh, SU2. But SU2, somehow it will be just uh, a compact subset where we know already the results. So this action. Uh, um, and here I'm restricted to the relative character variety. So this action is ergodic on the full relative character variety, if and only if uh, the norm of A is equal to the norm of B is equal to the norm of C is equal to the norm of B. The product is negative and uh, Norm of A is between, uh, now I never remember, 2 and square root of something. Uh, is 2 and square root of 2, uh, 1 plus square root of 5. Okay, and we will see, actually, these results, uh, um, I will hopefully have time to give you a proof of that. And uh, the idea of how to prove these results will be to reduce the character variety of the photosphere to the character variety of the one old torus uh, and use uh, some results known there. And everywhere else, we will be able to construct the domain of discontinuity. Okay? For example, this uh, is related to. So I have been speaking a bit, so I was visiting Stanford and Mariam uh, was very interested because uh, in some sense uh, a very good, uh, a very interesting question in the case of the PSL2R character variety is that uh, small, we have the tech Muller component, uh, but uh, we find uh, other components where the action is proper discontinuous. Uh, so do they correspond to some geometric structure? So since uh, it will be not only discrete and faithful, maybe there will be um, hyperbolic surface with cone points, uh, but actually this uh, seems the case. Uh, and, uh, and in fact, you, you, you will need to look at all the surfaces uh, associated with F3, in fact, um, which, uh, uh, yeah. for example, already the case of thinking F3 as pi 1 of the twice punctured torus, uh, it's getting more complicated uh, and uh, yeah, I will mention probably in the last part uh, why it will be very interesting. So if one understands that, uh, you have good hope to understand the general surface case. But uh, okay, so uh, this and uh, yes. So uh, actually, poop, poop, poop. yes, no PSL? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's true. Yes, you restrict to SL to have uh, everything. Uh, okay, 
Uh, okay, so uh, some setup. Okay, so we will use uh, we will need this following. So no, we will consider S uh, as the set of uh, free homotopy classes of uh, simple closed curve on uh, the photosphere. This set is parameterized by Q hat, okay, rational number plus. And uh, um, a way to encode this uh, is using the Fari graph. Okay. So the way to see this is, uh, for example, looking at the slope of your curve. And so what is the Fari graph? So the Fari graph you can define as the graph such that uh, has vertices uh, Q hat, and you put an edge between P and Q and R and S if uh, the determinant of uh, P, Q, R, S is uh, plus or minus one. For example, you do infinity, 0 over 1, 1 over 1, minus 1 over 1, and so on. Okay? And in fact, you can find everything by doing the Fari addition, okay? which is the addition that uh, we dream to when we are kids, so when we have fraction. Okay? So this uh, sum, you sum the, the numbers on top and the numbers on bottom, and so these uh, give you that. And uh, uh, At the level of simple closed curve, uh, for example, you, what that means, uh, it means that uh, these two curves uh, intersect minimally. Okay? So uh, these objects correspond to the complex of curves uh, of your surface. Uh, so in, in, a, in a photosphere, intersecting minimally means uh, having uh, two intersections. And uh, uh, in fact, actually, the, so we don't uh, really look uh, at uh, the Fari graph, but we will look at the dual of the Fari graph. So you put uh, a vertex for each triangle. And uh, so a triangle at the level of simple closed curve, it means uh, three curves intersecting minimally which will be related to having a triangulation of uh, your surface. Not. So sigma, it will be the dual graph. And in fact, uh, we will need to look uh, at the set of connected component uh, uh, of, let's say, the complement of uh, this fire graph, okay? And uh, notice that a connected component corresponds to a simple closed curve. And this will be, uh, basically this is the point of view that uh, Brian had when uh, he started working on this type of question. And, uh, okay, so now, let me tell you how we, I'm changing my problem. And uh, okay, so first let me answer the dimension of the character variety. So our character variety, it's identified with the, the set of, uh, let's call it, uh, the set of uh, septuples, so A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z seven number, seven complex number, which satisfy a certain equation, okay? And the equation that they satisfy is the following, so x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus x, y, z equal px plus qy plus r, Z plus S, uh, where P, Q, R, and S uh, are uh, function of the numbers A, B, C, and D. 
okay? So P is uh, A, B plus C, D, Q is uh, B, C plus A, D, R is A, C plus B, D, and S is uh, 4 minus A square minus B square minus C square minus D square minus A, B, C, and D. Okay, so how you do that is because you take a representation and you send it to the trace of rho of the generator. The byproducts and the triple product. So trace of rho of alpha, beta, and gamma. Trace of rho of alpha, beta. Uh, beta gamma and uh, alpha gamma. Okay, so I told you what's the meaning of alpha, beta, gamma, and delta, so alpha, beta, gamma, and so what's the meaning of this uh, double product, okay? In our surface, uh, I still, yeah, so, Alpha beta, it corresponds to the simple closed curve going around uh, in this direction. So this is alpha beta, this is uh, beta gamma, and this is uh, alpha gamma. In particular, we should notice that the mapping class group uh, when we fix the boundary value, is generated by the dent twist along these three simple closed curves. Okay, so uh, these three simple closed curves will be the one important when we look at uh, the relative character variety. Okay, because Uh, yeah, so the relative character variety, so the one where you fix A, B, C, and D, then uh, will be identified uh, with uh, triples of a complex number which satisfy this equation. Okay? And now the idea is to identify with another set. Okay, identify with the set of Markov map. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you. So you look at maps from boundary, so the connected component. So for every connected component of uh, the, the complement, uh, you put, uh, you give a complex number and you want this complex number to satisfy certain equation. And how you do that uh, is because uh, these components correspond to simple closed curve. So here you have curves. And then uh, for given a representation, you send uh, these uh, to the trace of rho of that curve. So the way to do that uh, is that you send to trace uh, of rho of gamma. Okay, so this is a set of maps from uh, connected component in to C that are uh, what we call mu Markov map. This is how Markov maps. This is how Brian uh, call it. And then uh, I think the first time we People gave a talk, you put that in the abstract, and then uh, you get the people that uh, are looking for something else in your talk. So you, you learn to be more careful. And in fact, uh, we should call them uh, trace labelings. So I think, uh, uh, but, uh, okay. And uh, what is a Markov map? So what are these uh, functions? And uh, what is mu? Okay, so mu is uh, my fortuple P, Q, R, and S. Okay, so given A, B, C, and D, then uh, I have this uh, fortuple that uh, uh, will tell me um, 
will give me the relationship between uh, the different, uh, different type of region. Okay, so actually before I do that, let me just do one remark. Um, if you see in this equation, no? These, uh, the, the term x, y, and z play a different role. So the equation is not symmetric with respect to x, y, and z. Which instead, when uh, you look at representations such that the boundary components are parabolic, then all these terms are the same. And so um, they, so the equation becomes symmetric with respect to x, y, z. For us, it's not. And so we need to color our graph, okay? So we need to color. We need to color the uh, edges of the graph and uh, the faces or uh, so the connected component. Okay, so and. Uh, So you want a color such that uh, the edge uh, are colored like that. Okay, so for every vertex, the three regions around the vertex uh, are colored differently and then uh, you just uh, keep uh, flipping uh, and you color in the same way. Okay? Um, so then now that we have this coloring, we can define a Markov map. So a map from the connected component in uh, C is a mu Markov. We need the two types of conditions. So one condition uh, around the vertex and one condition around the edge. Okay, so if uh, first vertex condition and this vertex condition tell you that whenever you have x, y, and z, then uh, I'm going to use uh, small letters for the value of the function at the region. So then the triple x, y, and z with that, well, that depends on the color, satisfies the equation. Okay, so we want that to be satisfied. And the second condition is a condition around the edge. I'm going to state for x and for y and z is the same. And then here you have the fact that x plus x prime, um, this sum is p minus yz. Okay, so what's the meaning of this? The meaning of this is the fact that the equation x is quadratic. If you look at an equation with respect to x, it's a quadratic equation. And so you have two solutions. And in some sense, you don't have any way to choose one with respect to the other. So this is like telling you that the sum of the two solutions of that equation gives these results. And in fact, that is also the action of the mapping class group, okay? And that the level of the surface uh, is like exchanging, uh, so whenever you have uh, two uh, intersecting, uh, somehow, uh, two curves intersecting minimally, you can choose uh, two different, uh, somehow, uh, way to complete to a triangulation of your surface, okay? I just want to clarify yeah. one thing. I'm, I'm, I'm a little unsure about the role of the actual components themselves. Could this all be stated just in terms of the combinatorics of the fairy graph? Yes. I, so so I'm just, to me, this is just another way of uh, looking at S. At the vertex. Yes. Okay, yes. That's what I yes. Yes. It's just that this is this kind of a visualization. Yes. Okay, yes. Good. Yes. And in fact, I will, uh, yeah. 
I will then show how to then state it in terms of what I said before uh, as a growth uh, of the length uh, asymptotically. But uh, the, the growth of the length of the simple closed curve asymptotically. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay, so uh, this is uh, the, the condition. And uh, um, so once you have uh, this type of map, uh, then uh, so a remark is that whenever you have a mu Markov map, uh, then uh, uh, this give you gives a, an orientation of uh, the graph gamma because uh, whenever you have x and x prime, you can look at. Uh, the modules of uh, the values of the trace, uh, and then you go towards the one that is smaller. Okay? If they are equal, you just choose the orientation as you want. Okay, so why we do that? Because, uh, small, I didn't tell you how the Bodwich set is defined, but basically, for having a proper discontinuous action, it will be bad to have a lot of elements with small trace, okay? So basically, if you have a representation and you have an elliptic element, then your action will not be ergodic, will not be proper discontinuous. And uh, um, that's uh, so the, the definition of the Bodwich set. So the Bodwich set is the set where the action will be proper discontinuous. Uh, and so you want two condition, so you want, uh, first uh, you don't want a parabolic or elliptic element, so uh, for every uh, gamma in S, uh, the trace of rho of uh, gamma is not in uh, minus two, two. And the second condition is that uh, uh, I can state it in many different ways. Is uh, one way to, to state it is that uh, somehow here you can see that uh, there exists uh, there exist, uh, a constant uh, that uh, just depend on uh, mu such that uh, if you look at uh, the number of uh, uh, simple closed curve such that uh, the trace of rho of gamma <coughs> is less or equal k, this uh, number is finite. In case for, in fact, for the case of F2, this case is actually 2. In our case, you can't uh, choose uh, a k, so, but uh, your k just depends on the values on the boundary. And uh, uh, you can also state that for all uh, k, this is true, okay? Um, and uh, it's uh, a little proof to, to prove it that uh, they are equivalent. Okay, so, uh, so in some sense, uh, from what we can see, we need to deal with the small traces, so small lengths, okay? And that is why uh, we, what we are doing here. Okay, and so the idea of the proof uh, will be then uh, to try to find, uh, so for any, for any representation, we will be able to find uh, a finite attracting subtrees, uh, and these, uh, uh, and actually, small, then you, small, you will use it to prove proper discontinuity because uh, to prove open, uh, you show that when you move a little far away, then this attracting subtree doesn't move that much. Uh, and uh, uh, you, can, uh, you can also s prove the proper discontinuity in a similar, in a similar way. Okay, but uh, uh, so is, uh, let's see what I want to say. Um, yeah. 
So, yeah, let me now say something about the proof. Huh? Oh, and uh, I don't have much time. Um, I have 10 minutes. Um, I can say something about, uh, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see something about the proof. So in the case of, uh, let me just be quick and uh, prove the theorem B. So the case of the real, uh, uh, um, the case of the real uh, proof of theorem B. Um, it's just, uh, they just want to show you how you deal with the, with the, in the real case. Uh, and then I will, uh, I will speak about the Fibonacci growth uh, and how to state, uh, to express our theorem in terms of the asymptotic growth. Okay, but, uh, uh, okay, so I will just uh, write the few steps that we will need. So for theorem B, theorem B was the one about the ergodicity on the full uh, real uh, components, okay? And so the first thing to notice is that uh, P, Q, and R, so these three values uh, are, uh, so when these three values uh, are uh, all zero, then uh, the character variety of the four all sphere reduces to the character variety of the one old torus, okay? Is, that is just because this equation uh, we reduce to the equation of the one old torus. And uh, uh, the second thing to notice is that uh, this uh, will happen if and only if uh, uh, you have two cases, so either uh, uh, yes, so norm of A equal norm of B equal norm of C equal norm of D and A, the product of the four values is negative or three of uh, A, B, C, and D are zero, are all zero. Then uh, in the case of uh, the one old torus, uh, so it was a result by Goldman. Goldman showed that uh, the action uh, on uh, the character variety of the one old torus uh, is ergodic uh, on the full character variety if and only if uh, S uh, is between uh, I think four and 20. And, uh, uh, and his way uh, to prove this uh, is by using a trace reduction type of argument. Um, and, then, uh, and then you just uh, plug in the two cases, so case A and case B, and uh, in case A, uh, in case A, what happens is that uh, you will uh, reduce to an equation of, uh, so you look at uh, here, so you look at S, so these four are all equal, and so you get uh, the equation four minus uh, four uh, A square, uh, this is negative, so it becomes positive, A four, so you want uh, these values uh, to be in, uh, 420, and so this gives you the condition on uh, models of A to be between uh, 2 and uh, 2 square root of, I think it's square root of 2, 1 plus square root of 5. And in the other case, uh, in case B, you have, uh, let's suppose that A, B, and C are 0. Then, uh, uh, or B, C, D, B, C, and D are zero, so you have four minus uh, A square, uh, B in uh, uh, four and uh, 20, and this is not possible, okay? And then uh, what we do is that uh, if uh, that doesn't happen, we construct domain of discontinuity. And uh, 
the way we construct this domain of discontinuity is uh, um, by looking at uh, disoriented graph uh, and uh, by proving, uh, uh, well, we need to prove, as I said before, this uh, existence of these attracting subtrees. And to do that, uh, we basically use uh, this equation and uh, understanding uh, uh, locally what happened. But uh, one important step is proving the Fibonacci growth, which will be related to the uh, word length of the associated element. Okay, so uh, for proof of A, which is also in some sense related to this uh, last bit of the proof, uh, is uh, uh, a, an important tool is uh, the Fibonacci growth. What I mean, oh, I don't have much time, but uh, let me just uh, say it very, oh. So you define a Fibonacci, so you define a Fibonacci function as follow. So you define the values one around a certain vertex, and then you, grow, you go on using Fibonacci rules, okay? So one plus one is two, two plus one is three, and so on, okay? And, uh, uh, and then you define your map to have Fibonacci grows. if asymptotically the two functions are the same. So in fact, uh, so you, you look at, uh, you can define for uh, a function into R, and then uh, so is that uh, if uh, there exists uh, there exist two constant uh, such that uh, phi of x uh, between k time Fibonacci function and uh, and uh, so the function that uh, we should have in mind uh, as uh, so this is the Fibonacci function uh, and then here the function that we will look uh, it's uh, log plus uh, of the modulus of phi and in fact this is related uh, to the length uh, length of rho of gamma. And so you prove the characterization in terms of the asymptotic growth that I said at the beginning. So you can define the Bodwich set as the set of representations such that there exists a k uh, that does depend on the representation such that the length of rho of gamma is uh, uh, greater or equal k times the word length because here this is related to the word length of the associated word. So here uh, we have a face is associated with a simple closed curve, uh, and then you look at uh, the word uh, associated uh, here, and then uh, here it will be A, B, A, C. And then, uh, uh, so this Fibonacci function is associated to the word length, uh, and so you state it in terms of the word length. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't have uh, much time to tell uh, the uh, yeah, new direction that we have. Sorry for, uh, yeah, I don't want to go over time. <laughs> Thank you. Questions for Sarah? Can you say anything about the nature of your unimportant identity? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, no, we don't know. So the point is that, uh, so um, actually we didn't really, uh, so you need to be more so a little careful to be able to write uh, this identity. So the point is that uh, when uh, you are able to find these attracting subtrees, uh, then uh, so the work by Bodwich, uh, so it tells you that uh, a certain sum over the simple closed curve of a certain function uh, is uh, something. 
But uh, for us, it's not clear one side or even the other side what it means for the photosphere. So what they managed to do in the case of the one old torus uh, is that uh, in the case of the one old torus, you have just one boundary curves in the, uh, on the boundary. And so you manage to understand and to find explicitly a certain function uh, written in terms of the length uh, um, and uh, uh, you manage to, let's say, simplify this type of function to have something that has a sort of geometrical meaning. In our case, uh, we have four values that can vary, uh, and so we need to define something in terms of these four values, uh, and we didn't uh, manage to have anything interesting. But uh, um, so uh, they, they managed to do some uh, machine identity. Uh, there are lots of uh, different flavors. So there is uh, now a new work of Sertan and uh, Hugo Parlier that they have some uh, other new identity. Uh, so it seems that basically the idea of uh, you have an equation uh, and you have a notion of flip, uh, that is the, the our notion of mapping class group action, so the edge identity, and then uh, you work with this flip uh, and you try to simplify. So you have this infinite sum, but then you manage to simplify a certain function and then you get something interesting. But uh, yeah, that's as much as uh, I can say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Good question. All right, let's thank Sarah again. Thank you.